Results from before clinical trials showed that infliximab is effective for inducing and maintaining clinical remission in patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Despite its proven efficacy, up to 60% of patients with an initial response later experience secondary loss of response, requiring dose escalation or a switch to another TNF antagonist to recapture response. We know from retrospective studies and post hoc analysis of phase 3 clinical trials that loss of clinical benefit can be due to increased clearance of the drug in the presence or absence of antibodies to infliximab. In our study, we wanted to evaluate a proactive approach whereby instead of awaiting for and acting upon clinical loss of response, therapeutic drug monitoring was introduced electively in patients still responding to maintenance therapy. The design employed a lead-in optimization phase in which patients' infliximum dose was titrated down if their drug levels were found to be above the predefined therapeutic interval of 3 to 7 micrograms per ml, or the dose was titrated up by interval shortening mostly if levels were found to be below this desirable range. The one-year randomized control trial was conducted at the University Hospital of Leuven, a tertiary referral center. Patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis with a stable response to infliximab therapy were eligible for the study. A cohort of 275 patients was screened. Drug concentrations and anti-drug antibodies were measured using in-house developed ELISAs. Of the patients screened, we observed that nearly a third had drug concentrations that were too high. 44% had drug concentrations within the predefined optimal interval. One third of the patients had concentrations that were sub-therapeutic. 263 patients were eligible for study entry. After patients were dose optimized to achieve infliximab TRF concentrations within the 3 to 7 micrograms per ml range, patients were randomized to either a therapeutic drug monitoring arm, whereby infliximab dosing was continuously adjusted as needed to keep drug levels within the predefined range, or to a conventional therapy arm with continued unaltered infliximab dosing unless a clinical flare occurred. So let's look at our results. If we first go to the slide of the optimization phase, as you see here, and we're looking at the patients with subtherapeutic infliximab trough concentrations, there we see that dose escalation of these patients led to a significant increase in the proportion of patients with Crohn's disease in remission than before the dose escalation, and also to a decrease in the median concentration of CRP or C-reactive protein compared with before the dose increase. Now, similar changes were not observed in patients with ulcerative colitis, although, of course, the sample size was much lower. We stay with the optimization phase, but we look at the patients who had supra-therapeutic levels. Looking at those patients, we saw that the dose reduction was safe and also successful in 93% of the patients. And this resulted in a 28% reduction in the drug cost from before the dose reduction. The primary endpoint, defined as clinical and biochemical remission one year after dose optimization, was achieved in 66% of patients whose dosing was based on clinical features and 69% of patients whose dosing was based on the TRF level achieved. The disease relapsed in 21 patients who received clinically based dosing, this was 17%, and in nine patients who received the concentration based dosing, which is 7%. So in conclusion, our study shows that targeting a patient's infliximab trough concentration to a range between 3 and 7 micrograms per ml results in a more efficient use of the drug. After dose optimization, a continued concentration-based dosing, however, was not superior to a clinically-based dosing, 
for achieving remission after one year, but it was associated still with fewer flares during the course of treatment. Now, I think that a very important aspect for the future is that monitoring of infliximab trough concentrations would further enhance decentralized care of patients with IBD who are treated with infliximab maintenance therapy.